The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. What? I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with all. My cup runneth over. And last but not least, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> amen, amen. Amen, amen. Uh, like I was talking about, we know that David was the uh, author of this. Through the Holy Spirit, by the, ins the inspired uh, anointing of the Holy Spirit, David wrote this. And as David wrote this, he was looking back at his life. They say David was an old veteran by, the, by then. When, 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 when you read this text, you can see that it was somebody that has been through some things. It was somebody that uh, looked back at their life and could uh, witness and testify what God has done in my life. Not only what God has done in my life, how God has protected me. God has leaded me. God has showed up and showed out in my life in the midst of my enemies. This is how we, sh we should look at this text. And as I said in my first part, we talked about, we had, we had four points. We had rest. We had <laughs> the rest. We had the recovery. And we had the restoration, which is point three, and point four is, is the rewards. And we, the last time I was up here, we was at point three, and we just got a little bit movement in that point. But today we're going to finish off that point three prayerfully, and then I, I know I'm going to have a point four, I mean, a part four, should I say, of this song, 23, and maybe a part five, but you know, y'all pray for me. I'm trying to uh, move faster, but it's hard. At the, 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 the expositor in my life won't let me go and, and, and pass over another text. As much as I want to talk about chapter, four, I mean, verse four, you know, yea, though I walk, I want to talk about that so bad. And I was planning on, but the expositor in me it would not let me do that, Minister Sam. Because <laughs> what the scripture say, line upon line, you know what I'm saying? So as, as a person that teaches, I'm, 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 I'm uphold by that law, by that, uh, 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 th the expository, uh, the expositors laws that, you know, I wouldn't say laws, but, you know, the rules that as an expositor, you know, we, we take our time and break down the scripture, line upon line, verse upon verse, dot upon dot. But I wanted to talk about for so bad, y'all. But let's finish three, y'all. Let's finish three. And point three, we, we get to verse three, actually. And I, I started off talking about, let's read verse three, y'all. He restored my soul. He leaded me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And when I, I looked at that and I, 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 I labeled my points, I was thinking about how I'll enjoy, you know, anybody that's been around me, and I, I said it before, Miss Linda, I said, you know, I, 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 I like classic cars. I like liking that, looking at classic car shows. I like building. I even go to some people's shops. And, I, you know, I, I, when I see an old broken down car in some backyard, back, backyard, I don't see trash, Minister Sam. I see how it can be restored. <laughs> I see it already done. In my mind, I already see it done. I already see candy paint. I already see rims. I already see that leather inside. I already see them rims rolling. I don't see trash. And that's how God, look, when, he, when he looks at you, he don't look at trash, you know. He look at how you're going to be. When he finished restoring you, when he finished with you, they're going to put you on the class, on the top of the car. They're going to put you in the front. And, they gonna, and God going to look at you. Look, at, look what I've done. And you're going to say the same thing. Look what he done. You know what I'm saying? That's what God, how he looks at your life. You're a work in process. Right now, some of us, we may be almost finished. We may be about to uh, get shined up, get washed up. Some of us, we may just, just come out of the junkyard. Yes, sir. <laughs> you even looking at yourself. Man, how can this get fixed? 
How, how, how is God going to do this, T.P.? But David, David in his wisdom, he looked back at what God did to him. And he said, look what you've done. You restored my soul. And, 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 and we talked about the soul. The soul is, is, is uh, composed of three parts, the mind, the will, and emotion. We talked about the mind very briefly. <laughs> and uh, what we said about the mind was, the way you think is, 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 is based on so many things. The way your mind works is based on so many things. Some of the things that it is based on is your experience in life. What you experience in life uh, uh, determines how your mind thinks. And actually, the chemicals in your brain, how they work and, and do together is also based on the experience in their life. You talk to somebody that had a lot of trauma. You talk to somebody that had a lot of things happen to them in life, a lot of abuse. And their thinking is, is, is based on that experience in life. How, how you was raised up, how, how you was raised up in your household, what part of, the, what side of, the, uh, what part of the town you was raised up. Where you was raised up, Louisiana, Georgia, New York, California. How you was raised overseas. That will uh, make a difference on how your mind works and thinks. The perception that you have on this life is based on your experiences, Amen. which ultimately uh, 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 conjures up, builds on how your mind actually looks at things, works, functions. What, 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 what also we can say? How you was wounded uh, uh, affects how your mind works. The trauma, I see that already. Your, 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 your preferences, what you, what you like, <laughs> what you want, what you think is this, what you think is that, shapes how your mind thinks of things. If you like fried chicken, when you, when you pass by Popeye's, you're going to look. <laughs> it's your preference. Somebody might not like chicken. Somebody might like sushi. They pass you. Look, so, so, black people, you know, you talk about sushi. Ugh. It's your preference. And your preference decides how your mind thinks. <laughs> what you are drawn to most, what you are, 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 are led to think about most, your preferences. <laughs> the opinion you have of others based what you think. Uh, the opinion that you have of others shapes how your mind thinks of that, those prayer people. <laughs> if, you, if you're born uh, 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 loving a certain race of people, how you think about that race of people, basic, uh, 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 actually, oh, everybody all right back there? <laughs> you see how my mind is shaped? I thought that was a security threat. <laughs> but how your mind thinks and what opinion you have of others and certain things shapes how your mind thinks of those things. <laughs> Now, how you, how you get those preferences, that's a whole other story in itself. Your mama could have not liked this. Your daddy could have not liked this. Now, you got that preference, and you don't even know why you have that preference. You was born on a certain type, side of the hood. You was born where, where people cook a uh, cowboy stew, where people cook this and all. That's what you think of, 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 of pork, this and that, that and this. Your opinion of others. Even further than that, we talked about how the chemistry uh, in your brain could be uh, 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 rearranged, could be uh, malfunctioning, and it will shape how you think, how your mind functions. This functions in the mind by chemically based, by uh, uh, whatever happens in your life, whether you was doing drugs, whether you took something, whether you even have allergies, can affect how your mind thinks. Yes, We're talking about the chemistry of the mind. Amen. You know. Some people have problems where they have bipolar, schizophrenia, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to just share this and, and, and move on, TP, but, you know, as a, as a black people, we don't talk about mental things too much. <laughs> it's taboo. But y'all need to talk about those things. You, 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 you grab a personal friend, you grab a friend that you can be uh, trust, trustful, you know, you could uh, 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 have some trust in what you're about to tell them. You tell them what's going on. Now, don't go tell the no messy person on the person that you know. Everybody going to know that you got problems with your brain now. When this is a serious thing amongst our community, people, things is happening to us that ain't never happened to before. 
Things that is happening in their uh, 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 part of society is happening to us now. And, and that's so, so many other reasons because, you know, of our uh, 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 living in this second Egypt right now. We're taking on their customs. We're taking on their uh, things that they do, but it's not made for us. we made for certain things. It's not that we're better than us, but we made different. And the standard that we are upholding in this season and the dispensation uh, is, 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 is being pressed upon you while you live, have to live a different way, Kent. Okay? The, 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 the expectations of God is, is being pressured upon you because you know better. The, the oracles God has written in your heart and you know that you're not, you know you're not supposed to be acting like that. You know you're not supposed to be thinking like that. You know you're not supposed to be doing things like that. I said I was going to be calm today. Ah, Miss Leola. Man, I, I really, I, I say I'm, bro, Deacon Montgomery, I say I was going to, I'm laying in bed, I say I'm going to chill tonight. Ah, all right. Well, I lied to myself. <laughs> Y'all just pray for me, but I, I get so excited, yo. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> he did, he did, he did. You know, even in those bad times, Brother George, even when you having problems right now, guess what? Even if you're coming in broken and hurt and damaged and just have nowhere else to go, today you can know that Christ died for you while you was cutting up. I tell you, when I, I, was, I was just getting saved, when I was just looking at the scripture, I looked at that scripture, and I looked at it real good, Brother Carl, and I was like, man, Christ died for me while I was cutting up? Yes, sir. That means Christ was giving me everything. Christ was looking upon me. Christ was showing love to me while I was cutting up, while I was pumping my fist at him. Yes. So today, don't think you're too rough enough, you're too bad enough to where Christ don't accept you. Yes. Come in broken, come in damaged, you know. Just like that man, you know, you want, you want to get your car fixed, you want to get your car painted, you want to get your car changed in this, this position, that position. When you bring it to a man that's a master mechanic, a master auto body man, a master uh, this and that, when he, you bring it to him, he ain't looking at that like that, that can't be fixed. So when you bring yourself, offer yourself to God, God is not going to turn you down. God is going to say, come on. Come on, you just believe in me, you just accept me, I'm going to make you look good again. I'm going to make you, I'm going to restore you back to where the original condition was. <laughs> That's a good God, huh? I could come in limping, broke, hurt, one eye, four teeth. <laughs> and look, God is not going to turn you away, my people. Anybody in here, God is not, don't listen to that lie. Don't listen to what people tell you. Now, when you come in here, you're now we're going to get to work. And this is what David is saying. He restored my soul. We talked about the mind. Let's finish with the mind. Let's move on to the will. And I have a definition of the will. The will is the faculty of choices or decisions by which we determine which actions we shall perform. As a faculty of decisions, the will is naturally seen as the point of which exercise, our, 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 we exercise our freedom of actions, our control of how we act. If something is in the will of a person that they want to happen, God's will is how God wants a person to act in a certain way. Yes. <laughs> we, we have a certain will, and I'm getting ahead of myself. And, and, and as men, we like to brag on I got this. I remember my uncle, I was thinking about this earlier. My uncle said when I was working for him, Frank, and Uncle Simon, y'all pray for Uncle Simon. But Uncle Simon told me one thing, TP. He walk in there, I, I, I come in there with my lip hanging. I'm Kendrick, I'm feeling bad, I, I must, but I'm, I'm kind of lying because I stayed out too late and I was, you know, you know fro, fro licking, if I'm saying right. But I was trying to lie to him. He looked at me in my face. He said, I don't care how you feel, you get that work done. <laughs> But, but, but it's, it's what made me, uh, sort of speak, like a horse, you know what I'm saying? You know, but there's another side of that, you know, you can't work, 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 and not rest, rest, rest also. You gotta be balanced. 
You know what I'm saying? But what my uncle was telling me, you, you, you conjure up the strength. You conjure up your will. You make your will say, I'm going to get this work done. I don't care how I feel. So today, look, I ain't going to even lie. Sometimes I come to church. Sometimes I come to Bible study. I ain't feeling too good. I want to just two-piece somebody. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just not in a good mood. I'm just, I'm just, I know I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. I woke up under the bed. I woke up at this. Thing. But guess what? I get my tail head. It's going to be all right. Because nine times out of ten, if I'm feeling like that, from, the, from this pulpit, I got my answer. <laughs> and my answer is to seek him. And I could, I could hear the Lord looking at me and say, hey, boy, hey, boy, you feeling this way? We're going to talk about feelings. We're going to talk about that a little later. But in emotions, I don't care how you feel. You come to the house of God. <laughs> ah, ain't that right, y'all? Y'all didn't feel some kind of way and didn't want to come to Bible study? Don't lie to me. Don't sit there and lie to me. We're telling the truth. We're some believers now. We're going to keep it real. Look, and I'm being a realist and being upfront, transparent right here. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? I'm coming here. Sometimes I didn't come up, look, look, I didn't come up here, Frankie, look. I said, oh, Lord, it's going to be the last time. I said, what, what better time to fall out on the, on the pulpit? What better time to fall out in front of my people, a guy where they can come pray on me and pump my chest or just, don't ask Phil, Phil, my, you're going to say he's going to pump my chest with his feet. <laughs> you say, I ain't putting mouth to mouth to you, but I'm going to pump your chest, cousin. <laughs> but look, what better place than to be in the house of God? Amongst your people, amongst your family, people that really love you, people that's really going to pray for you, people that's going to really look out for you. Not, I, I don't know how I got that far, but yeah. Uh, Matthew 7, 21 says, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of Father which is in heaven. And, and, and how can I, how, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but let me read a few things too. A man's will is the organ for decisions, making you to want or not to want a thing. Choose or not to choose a thing is a typical uh, uh, portion of the will. It is the helm by which he sails upon the sea of life. And, and, and our will before Christ it, 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 it's, it's, it's being governed by so many things. Our will is, is corrupt. Our will is polluted by how we live, by what we raised in, by, 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 by this United States, by this second Egypt, by this Babylonian system. It governs our will, how we was raised. Our parents showed us how to uh, use our will to get things done, to make decisions. Our, our grandfathers, our friends in the hood, our friends at school, all uh, had a play in how your will uh, 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 makes decision. What, what you use to make decision, what you use to say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, what you use to say, I'm going to get this done, what I want and what I w will want, that's the will. The will, our will could be strong and our will could be soft, uh, 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 weak, should I say. Yes, but we want to know that our will before Christ is corrupted. Our will before Christ it's, 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 it's polluted by the enemy and all this will be because when, when he say do this, when he prompt you to do this, you do it. <laughs> hey, sometimes you do stuff and you don't even know why you do it. You don't even know sometimes why you do the stuff you do. And then when you do it, you'd be like, man, while I did that, you knew it was wrong, but you still had no choice to do it. See, the enemy is grabbing your will, showing you what to do, prompting you, uh, pushing you to do what is wrong. And look, even if it's good and more of that, and I want you to keep doing that, but if it's not uh, 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 given over to God's will or to, to the cross, it is corrupt. It is tainted. <laughs> so we got to know that also. See, when God saves you, and it is about your emotions, your reasoning, however he most is concerned about your will being lined up with his will. Well, let me, let me say, and I said that wrong, I read, wrote that wrong, but God is concerned about your emotions and he is concerned about your, 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 your feelings also. But don't think he's most concerned about that. 
He's most concerned about you doing the will that he uh, uh, says in your life. The will that this Bible says about your life. The will that you learn from uh, 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 coming to Bible study, coming to church. That will is what God is most concerned about. So when you get saved, your, your, your chief uh, uh, thing you should be pushing upon is that your will matches his will. That, that's what your concern should be. So, so when you get saved, that's not it. That's not it. That's where disciple uh, making come in. That's where you, you go to the DT classes. Look, y'all go to the DT classes. They got some good DT classes that's going to learn about those beginning times when you get saved. So when you get saved, you, you go into heaven, you, 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 you're redeemed, you, the perpetuation is, 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 is part upon for all your sins. But guess what? You got some work to do. You got to be concerned with God's will. God's will. And your will is going to be uh, transformed. It's going to be uh, cleaned out, cleared out by God's will. And I'm saying all this, he restored his soul. But before God can lead you on the path of righteousness, which is the other part of this verse, he got to clean your soul because your soul uh, directs you in another, another way. And it's usually in the ditch. <laughs> The blind lead the blind. So your soul got to be restored. Uh, uh, you gotta, you, you, your soul got to be resurrected. Your soul got to be transformed. Your soul got to be fixed up. Your soul got to be made new in order to follow the path of righteousness. <laughs> and look, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, I could get deep in the will and the emotions, but I got to move on. Eh. If y'all need some more understanding of maybe if I have another chance, maybe I'm going to do a DZ class on just the mind and the will and the emotions. Because I could do a class on just each of them. But the will is, is, is basically that. Oh, I'm out of breath already. But, but know that I like, 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 as Hebrews, your standard got to be much higher. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A lot of y'all standards is not that high, TP. Not, not you, TP, but I want you to agree with, agree with me. God, our, our standards are not that high. And I'm talking about even in Christianity. Because the, the way we learn Christianity is according to that Babylonian system. According to Egypt, too. That's the type of Christianity. God, he saved us. Yes, he used us. But let me tell you, some Hebrews, you got you to live a little differently. It's just, it's just like that, that kid, that kid that's cutting up. Other, other kids can cut up. Other kids can do all kind of stuff. But, 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 but God's chosen people, Israel, I'm going to get with you. <laughs> I'm going to tell you because you know better. Yes, sir. You may not know everything right now, but this is the reason I'm here to give you an example to show you what the scriptures say about the standards that Hebrews should be living. You are better than that. If, if, if you have a Ferrari and you have a Kia, you're going to drive that Ferrari a little different. You're going to take care of that little Ferrari a different. You're going to take, <laughs> you're going to jump that Kia. Well, the Kia is the Kia. I, let me not say it before I get sued or something, man. <laughs> Kia's are stepped up a lot, man. Y'all remember them old Hyundai's and them old Kia's? Lord Jesus. But look, you're going to take care of that expensive, that $250,000 car, a little bit different than you take care of that forty, thirty thousand thousand dollar car. And what I'm saying is, because God looks at you like an expensive, uh, He paid a price for you. <laughs> Look at that. He paid a price for you. You gotta live to what He thinks in accordance to what you He thinks of you. A lot of y'all not thinking of what how God thinks of you. God looks at you the head and not the tail. <laughs> You're an achiever. <laughs> He looks at it like that, but you don't look at it like that. You look at yourself as a failed uh, uh, product of this environment. You look at you as, as trash. You look at you, yourself like you're going to be in this junkyard, and I'm going to forever be in this junkyard. I'm going to be nothing, and I'm going to forever be nothing. But not God. God looks at you like something already done. He looks at you how you already going to be. And sometimes God show me how people are going to look after he gets a hold of them. God is not a liar. And look. <laughs> God will do it. God has the power, the wisdom, and everything to get you right. In Hebrews, you know y'all got stiff neck, y'all know y'all stubborn, and God got to do a little thing, something for you. Sometimes God got to put that jack him out. Sometimes God got to take the grenade launcher out. Sometimes he got to throw you in jail. You're going to get right. <laughs> I'm Minister Sam, you're going to get right. And look, 
even though he puts you in hard times and have you suffer uh, uh, these hard things, he's still doing it in love. Because guess what? It could be worse than it ha has been or can be. Believe me. Believe me. Somebody got it worse than you right now. If they looking at your life, I wish I had your life. And you, poo that, you got your lip all hanging on the ground. When God still got you walking around in your right mind, when God still got you with some shoes on your feet, when God still got you in a house, when God still got you a uh, uh, cash and dividend checks, and you tripping, and you tripping. I don't know where that comes from. Good, brother. Thank you. But hey, <laughs> let's move on to the, 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 the last part of this. Uh, Ooh, Lord, I'm out of breath for real. I got to I gotta do some push-ups for real minutes. <laughs> God. I am. I am. I'm fighting for your soul. I'm fighting for your soul. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. That's right, TP. But the third part of your soul, which is the emotions. <laughs> the first thing I can think about the emotions, Tyrone, man, our emotions messed up, my people. Our emotions messed up. Lord Jesus. Oh, emotions and feelings are very important. God gives us those things for a purpose. But if they are not uh, uh, connected to God, if they are not uh, uh, subdued, if they are not uh, 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 put in the right place by God, they could mess you up. Because before Christ, most of us are governed by emotions, how we feel. You know, <laughs> how we feel. Like, like Minister Brown said, I say, feelings are just feelings. That's the it. They're very fickle. One, one, one minute, you could be walking in Bible study, happy, happy. You see somebody and that, that, that follow you, and your feelings change. Now, now, now you're not going to have a good Bible study because of your feelings lied to you. That person may not have nothing to do with you, never, never saw you, don't even think about you another second, not any chance how you perceive the Bible. Ain't that something? Look how powerful feelings can be. Feelings are fickle. Feelings are fickle. Whew. If we pay attention to others and oneself, <laughs> we can come to a conclusion that our emotions are at the helm of our ship. And I'm not going to talk about uh, uh, women's emotion. I'm not going to talk about man's emotions because both of those, both of those emotions are messed up. <laughs> are messed up. Now, now, I'm 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 not going to go deep into that. I'm getting trouble. I'm getting trouble. <laughs> the, con the 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 conduct and action of a person are burnt from their emotions, being that the soul is made up of three parts we can conclude that they are controlled by the emotions mostly. <laughs> that means your, 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 your will is governed by your emotions. So if you feel a certain way, you're going to will yourself to do your, a certain thing because your emotions say that. <laughs> Ain't that something? Now, now, now you're feeling something way about a certain situation. Now it governs how you act or, or what you do uh, in accordance to those feelings. And a lot of times, the enemy knows that, so the enemy uses your emotions to make wrong decisions. Ain't that something? <laughs> You're trusting in your emotions. Oh, I, I feel a certain thing. I'm, I'm feeling this about this person. I'm feeling... Now, 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 if you being led by the Spirit of God, and you know that you are being led by the Spirit of God about this situation, that situation, I hear you go ahead. Now, your feelings? Ah... Uh, uh, watch out for your feelings. Watch out for your feelings. But your mind, your mind. Don't you know how you feel about a certain things can change how your mind thinks about a certain thing? It can actually change the chemicals in your mind. Because I've had some feelings about a thing before I did another thing, and I was thinking to myself, why did it happen, Frankie? Now, why, why am I having anxiety about a certain thing that is not even there? Because my emotions told me that this, uh, that perceived and lied to me that this was going to happen, which is probably never going to happen. Now you act until your feelings. 
What did, I don't know the percentage, but it's a high percentage. What, 80, 90, 95% of what you perceive is going to happen never happens. <laughs> Ain't that something? So what you're feeling, how you feeling about a certain thing, you got to watch. Because feelings could lie. Let me tell you something. You, a person, I've seen people act a certain way behind me because of the, I've seen people act a certain way towards me, should I say. And I, 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 I said something or I did something that was maybe a no, Ms. Leonard. You know, we, we can't do that right now. You know, or, 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 they weren't sure why I did this action or made a decision for that. And now they're looking at me and I could tell them, and it's the same. I say, oh, they're in their feelings. Now, 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 God has given me a wisdom because I know that I'm not going to count it against them. And as a Christian, you got to know that. You get Miss Leo, you got to know that. You got to know that. And y'all know that. I see, I see some of y'all. Because I've acted a certain way towards y'all, and I was in my feelings. And when, when I see you again, I'm thinking you're going to say this towards me, but all you do is give me a hug. You, you love on me. And I, you know, I, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't hold that way I was acting towards me. So when I see people doing that, God has given me a wisdom to not act like I should. I, God has given me a wisdom to not act like they are acting towards me. Because you got a boot and lip, I'm going to be have a boot and lip towards you too. You know, I'm going to come up there, you know, I see you got your ball in your fist. Am I going to ball my fist at to you? Now, if you swing, it's a different story. But anything. Anyway. <laughs> I, I, I got a few little techniques on me. But anyway, y'all see what I'm talking about? I'm, <sighs> your feelings. Your feelings, and I'm talking about your emotions. Our 101 diverse feelings manifest its functions. <laughs> How you feeling? You got to watch that because it's going to manifest a function. Because <laughs> if that feeling, matter, matter of fact, Kendrick, if you let that feeling sit there and, 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 and marinate like in a black snook, uh, Darius, that thing is going to produce a function. <laughs> I think it's going to be pushing your wheel like, ah, uh, maybe I could swing and hit them. Maybe, you know, maybe they did that. But you, the, the enemy is creating a false picture in your mind that's going, going, going to cause you to act a certain way. It's going to cause you to function in a certain way. And how many people have been killed, murdered, locked up for life behind their, func their functions? That are controlled by your feelings and your emotions. <laughs> how many? I say a bunch of them. How many times you can look in your life and, and, and think back, I made a wrong decision on my emotions and I messed up. David is looking in, in, in while he's writing this text, TP, and he is saying, I messed up. How I thought, because can you imagine how he was feeling against King Saul when Saul was throwing them javelins, when Saul was trying to kill him? How do you think he was feeling about Saul? And David is looking back, God, you restored my soul. Now I can think right thoughts about this man, even though he's trying to kill me. <laughs> Ain't that something? Ain't that something? But most of, these, most of all these expressions of our feelings fall under three categories. Affections, desires, and feelings. Should a, should a saint overcome all these three, he is, he is well on his way to entering upon the path of righteousness. <laughs> Let me read that again. Should a saint, a saint overcome all these three, Carl, Deacon Carl, he will be well on the way to entering upon the path of righteousness. You see, your, your, your mind, will, and emotions got to be uh, 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 fixed, got to be transformed, got to be made new. So when, when God puts you on those paths of righteousness, you're not going to think a certain way. You're not going to be acting a certain way. You're not going to be making wrong decisions because if, 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 if your soul is not right, <laughs> if your soul is not fixed, if your soul, now, now let me give you something to you. It don't have to be all right, but it got to be somewhat right. Because when God takes you on the path of righteousness, you, you don't want to be making some wrong decisions and you're going to be going off that path. Because guess what? You're wrong, you make the wrong decisions or, 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 or on that path, you got to go back and start over again. Because <laughs> you didn't learn. Every time I, I teach you and every time I guide you and every time I show you the way, you mess up. 
Some of y'all in here some managers, supervisors, and y'all some bosses. <laughs> and y'all see them people that can't get it right. You know what I'm saying? If you have mercy and grace like God, you put that person back, all right, you're going to learn this until you get it right. Because if I, I, I let you go on the, and continue on this way, you're going to mess up the whole ship. <laughs> you're going to mess up everything. Now we all fine. Because I let you do this. Because I didn't correct you in love. Hey, get that right before you can move on. See, that's what God do sometimes to you. <laughs> God, God sets you back a few more paces. And he's not throwing you away like, like the world do. <laughs> he's saying, I'm just putting you back because you ain't got a few things right. Some of y'all is not, is not in the position that you desire to be because your soul is not right. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't want to blame all of the percentage of your soul, or what's wrong with your soul on you, but it could be all kind of things. There's so many things could mess up your soul, which ultimately will mess you up and, and, and disqualify you to, to continue on this path of righteousness. We got to be restored. We got to be restored. And, 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 and by now, if you don't think you need some restoration, y'all don't turn your head, but in your mind, tell the person, <laughs> you need to be restored. Y'all just keep looking straight. Keep looking straight. Repeat after me. Y'all need to be restored. Y'all need to be restored. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Boston some people smiling. Don't look. Still don't look. Still don't look. Because guess what? You still need some yourself. <laughs> hey, we all undone, my people. We all undone. You've been to church two weeks. Telling somebody about uh, a theology. Telling somebody about uh, uh, <laughs> the sovereignty of God. Tell somebody about, you know, providence. Man, you can't stop fussing on the way to Bible study. You can't stop cussing. And you're talking about other people. Right now, it, uh, the, the spirit of unity is real thick and prevalent. The spirit of unity is real uh, 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 heavy on us as a people. Now, you got to learn to let that spirit fall on you. You got to stop uh, 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 shoving that spirit away. You got to stop pushing that spirit of unity away, and you got to stop uh, uh, grabbing. You got to stop grabbing stuff that, that, that make you divisive. You still got to stop <laughs> grabbing onto stuff because you used to divide and conquer. But here we, 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 we called upon to be in unification, my people. So a spirit of unity, you got to put it in your pockets. Don't throw it away. And don't grab on uh, 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 dividedness. Don't, don't grab on uh, uh, just divine people, talking about people, looking at your people based on your emotions about or something. Because guess what? Emotions are fickle, my people. Fickle, fickle, fickle. Few matters in this world are as changeable as the emotions. <laughs> Few matters <laughs> in this world are as changeable as emotions. We can be one way one minute, <laughs> and quite opposite the next. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't that something, y'all? Emotions change as feelings change. And how fast feelings can change so drastically. <laughs> hey, <laughs> emotions change as feelings change. So as your feelings change about a situation, you can feel your emotions change about that situation also. But as you recognize how quick those feelings change. <laughs> Ain't that something, y'all? That's the truth, huh? Choo. We can now come to another conclusion. Emotions are important and necessary. It has to be crucified by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that person accepts, and also that that person accepts Jesus Christ as the Lord of all things. Like I said, like, like, like David said at the beginning of this, this song, he said, God was his shepherd. God was his Lord. And if we don't make Jesus Christ as the Lord of our life, as the one that controls every part of our life, every faculty of our life, we're going to have these troubles. You've been having problems with your emotions and feelings for years and years and years, and you never could change it. You want to change it. You want to get bad, better. 
But now you know what it takes, and that's to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. Now that you know you got problems with your feelings and emotions, you got problems with your, 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 your will, you got problems with your mind, now that you know that you are a candidate for Jesus Christ to save you and make you new, <laughs> to, 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 to fix what's going on in your life. If you be real with yourself and say to yourself, I got problems in my mind, I got problems in my emotions, I got problems in my will, I got problems. You can know that you are a perfect candidate. You are qualified to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior right now today. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It's, it's beautiful, y'all. It's beautiful, y'all. Now, therefore, after we do that, we can evolve the alternating kind of existence and have his soul restored. You know, every day we go through all kind of waves of emotion. In the morning we feel good, in the afternoon we feel bad. In the morning we feel bad, in the afternoon we feel good. Our life is like this, like this. Waves of emotion, waves of thoughts, waves of way you act, just, just, just not uh, 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 consistent. I, I don't know about y'all, but I want to live a consistent life. I don't like to wake up just, you know, riding around in my truck, just feeling some kind of way, and, I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm saved, I'm on fire for Christ, but I'm feeling some kind of way. My, my soul is not fixed, or my store is not restored. You know, even after Christ, if you're not aware that your soul needs to be uh, fixed, you can have a miserable life. You could be going to heaven. You could be uh, 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 accepted into the pearly gates but you're going to be accepted with your bad thoughts and your bad feelings and your bad emotions. So today, we're going to do some correction. And this is what David, look, before God could take us further along in this movie, before God could take us any other place, before God, you know, you know how sometimes you used to tell your children or your, your, your bad nephew, look, if you cut up, I ain't taking you nowhere. And if you cut up this time and that stuff, I ain't never taking you back to Walmart. I ain't never taking you back to Target. I ain't never taking you back to, to this store or that store. You think God will take you a certain place and you ain't got some things fixed? You don't know that? I, I can't take you, I can't take you to, the, to the, the upper echelons in ministry. I can't take you to the upper, upper, upper echelons in the society, economic brackets, because you don't know how to act. You cut up too much. And I'm, I'm not going to fault y'all. We've been messed up, my people. We've been messed up in the system. We've been messed up. Messed up, traumatized, abused, taken for granted. But it's got to stop today. Got to stop, got to stop. And I'm going to move on. I didn't get far, y'all. I was going to move, but look. We're going to look at the, 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 the B part of this, this third verse. We talked about the soul, and, and, and I know I skipped off with some stuff about the mind with an emotion, but don't fault me. Y'all can talk to me after Bible study, or we're going to have some, uh, a little deeper in depth. If God leaves me, I'm going to go a little deeper, maybe on a Bible study, maybe do a DT class. Y'all don't fault me. If I miss some things, I'm, I'm kind of going deep, but shallow a little bit, because I got to move on. And let's move on, y'all. He says, in verse 3, he says, God, he restored my soul, and he leaded me. <laughs> he leaded me. I, 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 I wanted to go further in that, but this is the, the sub point B, and he says, he leaded me. I couldn't go further along, Frankie, and it, 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 it just stopped me. It paused me. It's like, you know, when you see something shining, you got to like, whoa. This is not the first time in this text you said he leaded me. <laughs> so when you see it a few times in a text, that means you got to pay attention to it. I mean, it's the same when we, as, as teachers, as, as people that break down the word, when you see a thing two or three times, you got to stop it. What that mean? What's going on with that? Why he said that? And as I looked at that, he leaded me. The first thing I thought about was how David so uh, 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 just anointed, so uh, big as the king, he still was trusting in God. To lead them. You see, as you get older in Christ, you, you discover and you find out that you need leading. I don't know about y'all, I need leading. 
as I walk and travail in this, 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 this life, as I walk and travail in this ministry, as I walk and travail in leadership, I need leadership, Tyrone. I need guidance to give me wisdom on what I should do this, what I should, when I should do that, where I should go, if I should go this down this path or should go down that path. I need leading because <laughs> within myself and without trusting Christ, I'm going to be led in the ditch. I'm going to be led in the ditch. And, and David, powerful as David is, big time as David is, he still knew he needed to be leaded by the God. By God. Can you look back in your life and see that God is leading you right now? Can, can, can you look back? Can, can you write a psalm about your life and you can see the same thing that he leaded me, Chris? Can, can, can you prove and can you tell something about my life that God leaded me in this situation? God led me in this situation. God showed me where to go. God showed me to avoid this so I could avoid that. Can you look back in your life and say that? Well, if you can't say that today, you're going to have to start saying that. Because today, if you look back tomorrow, what happened today, you could... Take a look and see that God was leading you. He led you here today to hear this word. <laughs> so that's proof that God is leading you. Look, if you don't pay attention to nothing I say, pay attention to what I'm seeing right now. Ask God to lead you. <laughs> Whether you feel it or not. And you, you uh, we, we, we talk about faith. We got to have faith in God. Sometimes God got to have you faith. When the leading look like it's going to be in the wrong direction, <laughs> and it look like it may fail, it look like it's not the right leading that you think in your carnal mind, you got to have faith that God is leading you in the right direction. God is leading you to the right job. God is leading you to the right person to marry. God is leading you where to spend your money here or there. God is leading you. And I'm going to get a little deeper in that. Sometimes God leads you where to drive. Sometimes God leads you what to eat. Sometimes God leads you how to do this. And that's not all the time. That's not cutting concrete. concrete. But sometimes he do that. Sometimes he pause you. Sometimes he make you get in a wreck to what make you avoid further wrecks. But he is leading you. He is leading you. And he can only lead you if, you store, if, you, if, you, if your soul is restored. Then he has a better chance of leading you. Because your, your, your soul is, 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 is just covered. It's just marinated with the, with the word of God. It's marinated with good teaching. It's marinated with good uh, worship. It's marinated with being around good people. And if God sees that in you, then he can lead you. Let me tell you something. If he can't see that in you, he's not going to be leading you. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I've been around people and I've told them to do something. And, and if, if they have a tendency to go the opposite way when I'm telling them to go that way, I'm going to stop leading them. And I'm going to say like my, my, my good minister friend, go ahead and go. Minister Phil said, go ahead and go. You get with your bad self, go ahead and go. And guess what? When you fall, I'm going to be there right there. Come on, let's let's. God want to make sure that when he leads you, you're going to listen to him. Because if your soul is subdued, it's, 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 it's controlled by the spirit of God, guess what? He can lead you. Because guess what? Uh, uh, your, your spirit is awoken now. Then when you get saved, your spirit is made new. Your spirit is just like, like putting a, uh, 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 some, some jumper cables on you and it's awakened. To, 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 uh, it's awakened to the, 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 the promptings, the whispers of the Spirit, the moving of the Spirit, the, the instruction of the Spirit, the, the revelation that the Spirit gives you about this Word, the revelation that I'm trying to give you right now. God gives you understanding when your Spirit is awakened, made new, saved, on fire for Christ. We can know that Christ is going to trust you with the leading that he has given you. Give the Lord a hand clap, y'all. Another way, how, and I see it already, how he leads us is by his spirit. By his spirit. If your soul 
is, 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 is fixed, is restored by the Lord, he can lead you by his spirit, through your spirit. How else? By providence. We, we, God, God could make things happen. God could make this happen in your life. God could let this happen in your life. God could put this person in your life by providence. And by him putting those certain things in your life, he can lead you a certain direction where he needs you. You see, we, we think we're in control of our lives. <laughs> we're not. If you look back, you can see also how God uses his providence, how he let things happen in your life, how he let things occur in your life, and he has led you in that direction by providence, my people. How else can he lead you? By his sovereignty. God is in control. God does what he wants to do when he wants to, uh, anytime he wants to. So if God wants to lead you, he can make this ha thing happen himself. He could come back and do whatever he needs to do to get you in that right direction so you could be led down the path of righteousness, my people. God can do that. That's how he leads. That's how he leads. And let's move on. I got about 11 minutes. The point C, paths of righteousness. You see, when you save and when, when you start trusting God and, and with your life, you got to trust that he's going to lead you in the right direction. He's not a God that's going to leave you in the wrong direction. <laughs> he's not going to lead you in a path of unrighteousness, Ken. He's going to lead you in a path of righteousness. And you got to know that because your soul is restored, because your, store, your soul is renewed, now you can walk on that path of righteousness because guess what? You like righteousness now. You like to do the thing. You like to read the word. You like to come to the Bible. You like to do the right thing. Even sometimes when that flesh cut up and wants you to do the wrong thing, you can know that something in the back of your mind is telling you to go down this path of righteousness because your soul is restored, made new. That's why David said he restored my soul so he could be led in the path of righteousness. If you know that he is righteous, this is 1 John uh, 2.29. If you know that he is righteous, you know that when one, that, that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. So, so when, when, when you're doing righteousness, when you are made to do right things with God, you can understand that you are being led by God. See, the devil is not going to lead you to do a righteous thing. The devil is going to lead you to do unrighteous things. So you can identify the two types of things, my people. You want to be led by the spirit of righteousness, and that's the spirit of God. Amen. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ, Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should work in them. You know what that means, Kate? That, that means, Kent, you know what that means? That means before you was born, he saw you doing those good works. <laughs> he saw you walking down a path of righteousness. He saw you doing the right things. You see, sometimes you got to see people doing the right things instead of what they're doing right now. You, you're looking at a person, you'll be like, oh, look, they're doing this. But you, go, you, you look at me, it should say, you know, God is going to make it right with them. God is going to show them the path of righteousness. They're going to be doing things because this is what this word says, Kendrick. <laughs> Before the foundation of the world, you was born to do good works. Ain't that some? Ain't that some? When somebody could look upon you and you say you're better than that. I see you doing more things. I see you doing this and that. I see you having more. I see you doing more things. I see you doing greater things. Ain't that? Don't that make you feel good when somebody looks upon you, looks in your eye, and hands you that? Or even somebody writes you a text. Even somebody writes you a note and says, you're going to do great things. You're going to do great righteous uh, uh, things. You're going to do uh, 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 big things. You're going to do great things. You're going to do mighty things. Because he trusts in you. Because he believes in you. Ain't something, ain't, ain't something great when somebody believes in you? Amen. Christ believed in you before the foundations of the world. Ain't that something? Now we get into election. That's a whole different subject too also. But we can say, you want God to lead you in this path of righteousness. After Christ, there should be a thirst of righteousness. You should have a desire to want to do the right thing. Now, now, it's not going to happen, boom, and you'll be loving the right things. Some people, stuff fall off right away. Some people, it takes a long time. Like, some people say, you know, I'm saved, but I'm quite not delivered. It takes a little time for you to be delivered of certain things, and nobody is just uh, an exact case. 
We don't know how that exactly happened. We some, and we can't push that upon people when that stuff happens. You know, you may have got saved and you stopped cussing, but somebody still have a problem with cussing, but you can't look at your life and then look at theirs and say they're not saved. You can't do that. That's not your job. <laughs> you can't put nobody in heaven. You can't put nobody in hell. That's not your job. But there should be something in you working to lead you and guide you and have thoughts and feelings about doing the right thing. And what the right thing is what this Bible says for you to do, not for what this world tells you to do, not for what the, the, the TV tells you to do, not for what those magazines tell you to do, not for what your unsaved partners, your uncles, and aunt tell you to do, but what this word of God says. Amen. That's what you should be looking at. That's what you should be basing on what is right and wrong. And today, the standard is being risen, my people. Some of y'all, I'm seeing this stuff and y'all used to this stuff. Y'all didn't heard this before. You didn't saw this before. You didn't thought about this stuff. This may seem elementary to you, but today I'm giving you a ram of word. <laughs> Raise up a standard. Raise up a standard. You know, all the attention is being turned toward the Hebrews, y'all. So when people see you as a Hebrew and you act in a certain way, they can say, oh, yeah, 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 God is doing that thing. So, so when they see them Hebrews corrected, when they see them Hebrews acting right, living like Christ say, they're going to say, I want what they want. <laughs> the nation's going to put in at our coat tail, They're going to be tagging at us. Bring us to your God. This is how this is going to happen, my people. Amen. This is how this is going to happen. <laughs> all right, all right. What are some other paths? What are some other paths besides path of righteousness? You should be on a path, or you should be thinking about your path to your purpose. <laughs> to your purpose. You know, Pastor been kind of giving some nuggets. I don't know when he's going to do it, but Pastor's going to do a sermon on purpose. You know, you, you should be thinking about what you was put on this earth to do. <laughs> Well, you should be thinking about why you exist. You should be thinking about, yes, to get saved and serve Christ, but there's a particular purpose that God has you uh, to be on a path towards. Look, you know, I, I, had, I had to fight with it. I had to, to think about it over the years. But my path, you know, is this teaching. My path is to be a, a breaker down of the scripture, if that makes sense to anybody. But... And, and, and some other things, and, and the path changes, the path get higher, the, 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 the purpose get higher, the expectation get higher, but you got to find out, and you got to be led to what your purpose on, and it may not be teaching, it may be to be the best usher that you could possibly be, because if you're anointed to be an usher, you're going to be way better as an usher than as a teacher of the Bible. Your job may be an anointing to be a security. You, you can see things before they're about to happen. You got a good uh, combination. You're quick. You're not, you, you didn't slam a few people in your life. You know what I'm saying? You're anointed to be security. Man. And guess what? If you're anointed to be that thing, God is going to take you places and, and, and positions that you never thought you was going to have. <laughs> so you got to be thinking about your path to your purpose right now. And I'm not talking about if you... You, when you was young, or, or if you, 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 you're in Titus, or you're a little older, it's too late. It's never too late, because God could, God is, uh, uh, look at it as one year as a thousand years to God. You know what I'm saying? Did I say it right? One day, one time. But it, it, it ain't about your age. It ain't about how much time you wasted. Like, some of y'all are looking at, I didn't waste too much time. I didn't did too much wickedness. But guess what? God can restore that time. God can give you back what the devil stole from you. God can restore the canker worms that are made upon your life. God can do that. What's some other paths? God can lead you on the path to be with the right people, Minister Sam. Because look, one person could change your life. One person. So you got to be led on a path to the right people, my people. How you find out about that, man? You pray and you ask God. You pray, man. You ask, you ask others that you trust and that you know have discernment what you think about this person, what you think about that person. And God going to put you with the right people, Ken. Especially when you get saved, man. God is going to uh, 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 take you away from certain people, and that could help you on your path because the wrong person can mess up your life also. <laughs> 
The wrong person can mess up your life. So God gonna take you away from the wrong people. You may be boohooing, crying, because God took this person out of your life, but it's the best thing that ever happened to you. When you look back, <laughs> Auntie P, when you look back, you'll be like, praise God. And, and don't be concerned how he do it. Don't be concerned how he do it. Because God that took people out of my life, and I'll be like, oh. Look, look at you. Look how God did that. Now, now, now I'm looking at it like, oh, why you did that, Jesus? And God looking at you, I'm trying to put you on the right path. <laughs> I'm trying to put you on the right path. And some people that you don't think going to be cool, not going to be right because they never came up the same upbringing as you. You're know, you looking at them like they're square, like, like they're like, 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 like they nobody. You, you can't be around the corporate people. You're always hanging around the gangster people. And when you're getting Christ, Christ puts you with all kind of people because we come from all walks of life. Now, now, now God puts you around that corporate person. Now he's telling you how to do uh, 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 investments, how to uh, do your account, how to do things properly. You know what I'm saying? You know, he might talk a little, yes, sir, you're rebob. You know what I'm saying? He might, he, might have a, he might have correct English, but guess what? You need to learn how to talk correct English. And then you're going to show that man how to do a little swag. You know, you got a little, this is how you walk, cuz. This is how you walk, cuz. You know what I'm saying? This is how you handle yourself when you're around people like this. You know what I'm saying? You, you're not a lost case. You know what I'm saying? Just because you come from the streets, from the ghetto. God can give you some skills. God can give you some skills how to, how to peep game, how to, how to not be tricked, how to, you know what I'm saying, how to think fast on your mind. You know what I'm saying? Don't think it a small thing that God puts you and raised you up in those certain circumstances and you can't be used for the kingdom, my people. <laughs> God will put you on the path of right people. <laughs> but also, you know, these days he also will pull you, put you in the path to the right church. The right church. Because the right church matters. The right church, the right pastor matters. Y'all, y'all see what's going on, you know, hey, I'm not pointing no fingers, but look, the right church, man, and the right pastor matters. God is going to lead you to the right church. I ain't saying this is the best church. I ain't saying this is the most perfect church. But guess what? I didn't learn a lot in this church. God done made me a man. God done showed me how to run, you know, uh, uh, so many things. So many things I cannot uh, uh, explain. I cannot enlist. But being at the right church matters, my people. So God is going to lead you to the right church. And I could say uh, some other things. God is going to lead you to the right person to marry. God is going to lead you even to the right state to be in. God is going to lead you to the right college to go to. God is going to lead you to the right job to be at. God is going to lead you also, whether you open this business or open that business, whether to write this book or that book, God is going to lead you to those things in the path. Now we got to stay on that path. Now we got to stay on that path. I'm going to stop right here. Next time I'm up here, we're going to talk about for his name's sake. <laughs> and that's a big deal, too. Big deal. I, I hope I got some points across, but the main point that I'm hoping you, uh, you get across in tonight, that without Christ, <laughs> without Christ, where would we be? I'm talking to the Christians. And now that you heard this truth, I'm talking to those that have never accepted Christ in their life. If you look back, because that scripture says Christ died for the ungodly, that means he is counting on you. <laughs> he is counting on you. He is expecting you to accept the gospel, accept the payment that he paid with his life for your sins. <laughs> hey, that's a good trade, man. Because guess what? I didn't, oh, I have so much sins. I had so much sins. And when I looked upon that, I said, somebody died. And they took the punishment that I rightfully deserve. And I could walk into a kingdom. I could go to heaven. I could get new life. I could walk upon this path of righteousness. I could get my soul that is restored and made new because my soul needs to be renewed and made new. And now I know what keys to open to get into that uh, 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 newness. And that's the key. The key. The key is Jesus Christ. <laughs> the key is Jesus Christ. 
So all you got to do is put Jesus Christ in your hand and accept him, and he will unlock your way into heaven. He will unlock your way to a better life. Let me tell you something. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be, uh, 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 even though the angels celebrate, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be changed automatically. But let me tell you something. It's way better than where I came from. And the life you're living without Christ right now is not worth it. <laughs> if you be real with yourself, <laughs> if you be real with yourself and think about how your life is without Christ before you stepped in this sanctuary today, if you think about it, and be real with yourself. You know you're not doing what you're supposed to do. God has been tugging at you. God has been uh, 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 reaching out to you, chasing you with his love. Today, you stop running from him. Today, you turn around and tell Christ, I accept what you offer. And the only thing you got to do is, A, accept that you are a sinner. If you be real with yourself, if you be a big girl, a big boy, if you be a big man, a big woman, and be real with yourself, you can say that you need help with a few things. <laughs> your life is not right. Unless you are perfect and none of you are perfect, your life is not right. Your life is not. So be big and admit that you got some things wrong with you. Be you got to believe that Jesus Christ did come and die. You see, I, I could line up people after people. I could line up a circle around this building for hundreds and hundreds of times, and people will testify that when they believe in Christ, he showed himself faithful. He showed himself real. He showed himself mighty. He showed himself able to do what he said he was going to do. I'm testifying. I'm not up here lying. I'm not up here just sounding good. When sometimes I don't even talk right, say the right grammar, but believe me. You got to feel me. This is real. <laughs> this is real. We're not doing no show up here, man. If I'm doing a show, man, I'm going to go back, you know, hey, go back and do that and die in the streets or whatever. But the third thing is, see, you got to confess. You got to tell somebody. You got, we're about to do the sinner's prayer in a few minutes. You got to tell Christ to come and save you, to confess. I do believe what you, what you did on, down, on that, that cross 2000. I believe that. And even if you don't believe, you can ask him to give you belief, to give you faith to believe in him. That's amazing. That's amazing. Only this God, the God of this Bible, can do such a thing. Only. Everybody on the sound of my voice, uh, put your head down and repeat after me. Now, it's not the prayer, but it's the heart behind the prayer. So what... After I tell you what to repeat after me, you mean it in your heart. Act like you and Christ is only together in this room. You're walking up to his throne and you're asking for forgiveness. Repeat after me, Lord, Lord. I come with all my mess, all my shortcomings, And I give it to you. I'm asking there, Lord. Put this on your cross. And forgive me. Lord, save me. Make me new. Restore my soul. Change my emotions. Fix my mind. And control my will. Forgive me. I dear Lord, I'm saying thank you from the bottom of my heart. Lead me with your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. And guide me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Well, the work is done, y'all. I'll leave y'all with a benediction. Father God, I thank you for your people being persistent. I thank you for your people for showing up. I thank you, pe I thank you people, dear Lord, for listen listening attentively, Father God. So pray, I'm praying, Father God, that they would be rewarded for diligently seeking you, dear Lord. I'm praying that they would be rewarded, Father God, 
with jobs they didn't expect. I'm praying that they would be rewarded, Father God, with, with Father God, uh, finances that they never thought they would have. I'm praying that, Father God, you would reward them, Father God, with a renewed heart, Father God, a renewed mind, Father God. Thank you, dear Lord, for what you're doing for my people, Father God. I'm praying that family members would be saved because they came and worship you here today, Father God. Father God, be with them tonight, Father God. I'm praying that, Father God, the last little bit of their day would be better than the beginning, dear Lord. So, Father God, thank you for what you're doing in this season, dear Lord, for my people, dear Lord. So I'm asking for all these things in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen, amen. Love y'all.